On today's lesson, I'm going to show different exercise statistics, and I'm going to cover the pie charts, bar charts, and we can see how we use statistics to analyze data. In front of me, I have a pie chart that is divided in four sectors. And every sector represents a fruit. This is this survey is based on the flavors of four fruits, apple, banana, orange, and pear. So you have done a survey asking a number of people about their favorite fruit. The fruits are apple, bananas, oranges, and pears. And every sector represents the number of people who chose this particular fruit. Now, it says this exercise that 40 people chose apple. And how many, we have to find how many people chose the pear. Now, looking at the angles here, the apple is 19 degrees. And the banana is 180. And the rest of the angle, because I know the whole circle is 360, the orange plus the pear is 100 is 90. And because they have e they are equal sectors, I divide 90 by 2 and can find the angle of the pair. Now, if now if the if 40 people chose the apple, now 40 is represents the 19 degree angle and 45 degrees is half. Now if the 40 chose apple, obviously dividing the, nine, the 40 by 2 give us the, um, uh, the number of people that chose, this is for the apples, okay, 40 are the apples. So dividing 40 by 2, because the angle 45 is half of 90, we can find the number of people who chose the pair. So number of people choosing the fruit pair is a half of, of 40. So it is 20. And now the part, second part of the question is to find how many are in total. How many people have we have done the survey in total? How many we have asked the group survey? So the group of people based, if I know the 40 represents a 19 degrees and the whole sector is 360, the whole circle, I need to times 4 times 40 because 4 times 90 is 360. So 4 times 40, 40 are the total number of people who chose the apples. So 4 times 40 is 160 people in total. So this is how we analyze the data with pie charts. The second diagram I have here are bar charts. Bar charts are a different type of diagram that shows, compares, it compares different categories. Now, if you see here the topic, the, this bar chart represents the average maximum temperature in London in different months, from January up to December. So I have 12 months. And the bar chart represents the temperatures. Now, we have a question below here. It says, what is the average temperature in March? We go and find the March, the bar that represents the March. And then we go on the vertical axis and we read the temperature on the vertical axis and it's 12. It says on the number B, which two months are the warmest? Obviously, the higher the bar, the more the warmer the month. So it's, we take the bar that are the tallest and these are the July and the August. And based on this bar chart, we can find different statistics to analyze. We can analyze different statistics. The bar chart is more simple to draw the bar chart and is very simple to understand as well. In which month is the average maximum temperature 15? Based again on the bar chart, I find the 15. 15 is on the April. On the vertical axis is the temperature and the horizontal axis are the months. 
So I go on the vertical axis and I find the right month. This is a type of frequency table. And this is an example of how we conduct service. This, we have here four categories representing different types of food. Burger, kebabs, pasty, and pizza. And then we have the frequency. Another column is the frequency which represents how many are the people who prefer this particular food. And you see here for the burger, I have seven lines, so it is seven people. Kebabs are three. You count the line because you go and ask the people, what is your preference? So you put a line on each category and then you total, you sum the lines and then you write the frequency on the next column, which is four for the pasty and pizza 14. What is the modal food? The modal food is the food, the category that has the highest frequency. And if you see the highest frequency, frequency means the number of people is on the pizza. So pizza is the modal food. How many children are in the in total? You can add the frequencies because the sum of the frequency represents the total number of people in this survey. And that's how we conduct these frequency tables. The next one is an example how to draw a pie chart based on the frequency table. Okay, so if I have numbers, so here I have a list of numbers and I group these numbers on the frequency table because this frequency table will help me find the angle on the pie chart. And the frequency is proportional to the whole of the angle of a circle. So I need to find the frequencies, how many numbers are between zero and four, how many numbers are between five, nine, how many numbers are 10 to 14. I need to put them into categories first and then find the total in each category. Think how many numbers are between 15 and 19, how many numbers are between 20 and 24. The frequencies are on the second column. Now let's see how we make the frequency now angle on the pie chart. If we know the total frequency, the total frequency is 30. I found the sum of the frequency is 30. I can make a proportion, for example, between 0 and 4, I have 4 people. So I do and divide by the total and I times by the total angle of a circle, 360. This gives me the angle on the pie chart. So 4 over 30 times 360 is 48 degrees. So I go to the pie chart and I go I get the protractor, I draw an angle of 48 degrees and this represents the number of texts between 0 and 4. The second angle is 8 over 30. If it, because 8 is double 4, it has to be double the 48, so it's 96 angle. So the second angle must be 96, the next one is 5. So 5 over 30 times 360 is 16 degrees. The other one is 9. The 9, the same way, 9 over 30 times 360 give you this angle. So you find this is 9 divided by 30 times 360 give you an angle of 108. 108. And the last one is 4. So it's the same, it's 48 degrees. And this is how you draw a pie chart with a frequency table. If you have a frequency table, you can also draw a bar chart. Okay, so you, another example, you may draw a bar chart, bar chart like this one. You have to find the frequencies on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis are the number of texts, are the numbers. Between 0 and 4, you read the frequency 4, so you draw a rectangle and bar. And you do for each category. It's very simple to draw. The, you can see very easily the model class here that is 15 to 19 because it's the highest rectangle. Another type in statistics, another statistic is to find the mode and the range using data, using the numbers. The mode is the number that occurs most often in a set of data. Okay, so if you see a list of numbers here, 2, 5, 2, 5, 3, 6, 9, 2, you see the number 2 occurs most often compared to the rest. And it's a good idea to put the numbers in order of size before analyzing the data. So you have two, 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 three times, once three, 
twice the five, once six, once nine. So the mode, the mode is the two. The same way you find the mode for the second data and the mode for the third data. The range is the difference between the highest value and the lowest. So you see from the first set, you do nine minus two is seven. And you find the range. The range measures the spread of the data. How spread out is the data? And now here I have one example of the frequency table that finds, we have asked different people about holidays here, yeah, the number of holidays they have had during the year. See, seven people had zero holidays, 14 people had one holiday, 10 people are, had two, three people had three, and one people had one person has four. Based on this table, we can find very easily how many pupils are in this class. Okay, because we ask them and we complete the table. This is the sum of the frequencies. How many pupils went on two or more holidays? I go to the table, two or more, I need to count the numbers 10 plus 3 plus 1 only because I get the numbers from the table. What percentage went on zero holidays? So I get, find the frequency for zero holidays is 7 and I need to make it a percentage. To make it a percentage, I divide by the total, 7 out of 35, the total of frequency is 35, and then this gives you 1 over 5, and 1 over 5, to make it a percentage, you times by 20, so it's 20%. The same way you do all of these frequency tables. It's very easy to answer once you understand how to complete the tables. You can find how many qubits are in the class, and we can answer all of the questions based on these tables. Now, sometimes you have grouped frequency tables. This is when you have frequencies and the first column is intervals between, for example, age. For example, how many people are between the age of 0 and 10? One person. How many are between 11 and 20? 13. And then you complete this frequency table. This is a grouped frequency table because you have intervals and frequencies. So we, we group the frequency table, then data is grouped into classes. And this co covers a range of values. This is an example of a group frequency table. You have classes and frequencies. And based on the ta this table, we can answer any question. For example, how many qubits are in the year 7? We need to find the sum of the frequencies. Sum of the frequencies is the second column, is the total of the people. How many qubits score more than 60 marks? I need to go and find the, two, the, two, the last two classes, 61 up to 100, and add the frequencies, 21 plus 10. What is the lowest possible mark a qubit could have scored? It can score between 0 and 20, but we don't know exactly where because it's a class. The lowest, of course, is 0 marks, but it can be anywhere between 0 and 20. This is how you complete the frequency group table. You put the numbers into these classes, so you delete the numbers, and you count the numbers first, and you put them into classes, and then it's easy to answer any question on this. The bar charts look like this, okay, so you, have, you can compare different categories and you can answer, this is very simple charts, the bar charts are very simple charts because it's very easy to understand. The taller the bar, the greater the frequency. And you can see these are line charts, but it's a bit similar to the bar charts. Instead of a bar, we draw a line. And it's exactly the same thing we do for this type. Dual bar charts is when we have uh, two bars for each category, and then you compare more easily. Now, if you like the lesson, you may subscribe and press the like button to see more lessons like this. Thank you.